Hi, my name is Dr. Liz Hoffman and I'm one of the product developers here at Ward Science. Today I'd like to introduce you to one of the AP Chemistry investigations that we developed to align to the new College Board standards. This is AP investigation number one, spectroscopy. What is the concentration of that solution? One thing that I'd like to do at the beginning is go through how we outlined our new lab activities. So you'll see they have a new refreshed look. They have a new cover. A nice table of contents that gives you everything that you need to know about what this lab entails. Some things that we did pull out for this particular new revamp of the AP Chemistry Labs are required knowledge, learning objectives, and then standards alignment, time requirements, a vocabulary section, as well as pre and post laboratory questions, and then activities for further study. So as I go through the lab, I'm gonna point out these different sections um, in our lab notebook. So first, it gives you a general abstract of what this lab is all about. And then it goes into the required prior knowledge and then what students will learn. So what, what students should know and what students will learn doing this lab. Then it tells you the activity learning objectives and then a little bit about AP Chemistry in general as well as how to record data correctly in a laboratory notebook and what materials you will need and what are provided in this particular kit. This next page is the holy grail of what you're going to need to show to your administrators about what standards you're aligning to. This has the big idea that it aligns to in the AP Chemistry College Board Standards, as well as the enduring understanding, the essential knowledge, the learning objectives, and the science practices themselves. The science practices are bolded throughout the entire manual so that you know exactly where these students are doing each particular science practice. We then give you a nice table about the time that it will require the students before, during, and after each individual lab activity. So before the pre-lab, basically what the students need to do and what the teacher needs to do approximately one day before starting the lab. Then activity one, which is the structured inquiry, and activity two. So there's no surprises during the lab as to what chemicals they may need as well as what you may need to make sure that they're provided. Of course, we have an extensive safety section that tells you about the lab and the chemicals that are used within it. And then the vocabulary section. This section was brought in to align to the actual Common Core standards in addition to the College Board standards. We then have an extensive introduction and background section for the teacher guide. In the student guide, the background section is actually quite shorter. It gives everyone everything that you will need. It makes sure that you have the student guide and the teacher guide so that you can give students a basic outline of the lab beforehand based on what they have in this background section. As you'll see also through here, as I was flipping, there's teacher tips and did you knows. These we put in there to get the students excited about the lab, so they're fun tips and tricks about the lab, as well as things that we found while we were doing the lab that go ahead and help you figure out what students might miss or might have a misunderstanding about. So in this particular um, section it says some commonly used spectrophotometers do not have clear delineations between the displayed wavelengths. In this case setting the spectrophotometer in the range of 650 nanometers will work. The maximum absorbance for blue dye number one is 630. However using this setting students should be able to obtain correct data even if the wavelength is not exactly 630. So again, then we try to give you at least an idea of what might go wrong in the lab and ways that you can fix it easily. So then we go into the procedure one, which is the structured inquiry. It says students should obtain 60 milliliters of food dye blue number one, which is a six micromolar in concentration, which we give you, we provide right in the box for you so you don't have to do any dilutions or anything like that, saving time and, and energy and money. Um, they also need to make sure that they have water present as well as pipettes and a cuvette. One easy way to do the dilutions, is, which we tell them to prepare to make a serial dilution, is with test tubes. So I've labeled 10 test tubes, 1 through 10, 
I then went ahead and did the dilution for each one of them, the first one being 10 milliliters of water and the number 10 being 10 milliliters of blue dye number one. This is the dilution that you would do for a Beer's Law plot. However, we do not point this out in this particular activity because the College Board waits until investigation number two to point this out. So we're just telling them exactly how they need to make 10 test tubes with diluted values. Once they have the values, or once they have the test tubes, you can go ahead and tell them to pipette just enough of their dye mixture into the cubette and then place in the spectrophotometer once it has been blanked. Make sure the spectrophotometer is set at approximately 630 nanometers and then go through the steps of, of getting the percent transmittance or absorbance. So depending on what the students first measure, they can fill in this table accordingly. So in this table, it's the dilution ratio, the molar concentration which students can get from doing M1V1 equals M2V2, the measured percent transmittance, the decimal value, and then the conversion to the absorbance of the particular solution. Once they have that completed, they will go ahead and do the results and analysis for activity number one, which is creating what we know as a Beer's Law plot. So that will be a plot of a straight line of samples 0 or 1 through 10, and then they can get the equation of the best fit line that goes through their data. After that is complete, activity 1 is complete. Activity 2 is likewise very similar to activity 1. You have a solution of science aid, which is blue dye number 1, but diluted in unknown concentration. So they will take their small sample of that blue dye Again, put it into the spectrophotometer and get the percent transmittance and calculate the absorbance and then the molar concentration, all from the equation of the best set line from activity number one. Once that's done, students can then move on to the assessment section. In particular, this assessment section has seven different questions that students need to answer. And if you look at number two in particular, it says, does this concentration of the solute affect percent transmittance directly or indirectly, what about absorbance? And directly or indirectly is bolded. That is because it's one of the science practices that is called out by the College Board as to what students need to understand and gain from this lab activity. One other feature that we do on all of our activities is an activity for further study. So if there's a student that's looking for extra credit work or a time that you run out of activities to do in the lab and you have time to do it because you're that lucky, you want to go ahead and do something else, something a little bit more exciting. This is where you'd pick up your lab manual and say, I flip to the back page and say, I think I want to do this experiment next. A little bit more complicated, a little bit more materials involved, but still really fun and centered around the same central concept as the entire lab itself. If you have any questions about the investigation that we did today for AP Chemistry, please feel free to email us at sciencehelp at vwr.com. Thank you.